Hello and welcome to the Coon Hunting University Podcast. This is your host, Tyler Duncan. And like always, class is in session. Hey y'all, and welcome back. Today I'm joined by Mr. Evan Ross. Man, Evan's been on a tear this year in both kennel clubs. Evan's also the youth director of his local coon hunting club. And he won first place in the Mississippi State Science Fair with a project about coon hunting. So today we're going to discuss his award-winning project and also some creative ways to introduce youth into coon hunting since Evan himself is also a youth. He's in the ninth grade here in Mississippi. Evan will be joining us virtually, so let's go on ahead, get him online. Y'all sit back and enjoy. Hey, Evan, how's it going, buddy? Hey, everybody. If you could, please tell the listeners a little bit about yourself. I'm Evan Ross. I'm 14 years old. I'm in the ninth grade at Magnolia Heights School. I've grown up on a farm outside of Como, Mississippi, where my father manages the cattle. I play football for my school and work on the farm. Growing up in the country, I've always enjoyed hunting and being outdoors. How'd you get your start into coon hunting? Well, my dad was a coon hunter since the age of about 15. He used to competition hunt his own dogs and handle for other people. In fact, a funny story about my parents is that my father had to leave their honeymoon after only three days to handle a dog in a national competition. He continued to hunt until an incident happened a few years later when I was still in diapers. He had to call my mom to come get him at 3 a.m. with me as a baby to come take him back to his truck parked miles away. So that ended my dad's coon hunting for several years. So the past few years, one of my dad's good friends, Mike Crockett, would bring his black and tans to the farm, and my younger brother and I would hunt with him during Christmas break. Then in December 2019, Mr. Mike came over and we had a really good hunt with two of his young puppies and Chrome. My dad commented when we got back to the house, those young dogs are ready to be singled out. So Mike replied that I could choose one of them and go put them on the chain. We agreed to be partners on the one I chose. The puppy I chose is called Trap. So the next day, my dad and I went to Timber Creek Dog Supply owned by Mr. Bob Osborne to get lights and boots. I began to hunt on a weekly basis, just me trapping my dad three to four nights a week for the next six months. We would simulate a competition hunt scenario when we would hunt. My dad was training both me and my dog. His motto is, if a dog can't beat himself, then he's not ready for a competition hunt. I began to coon hunt competitively in May 2020. Yeah, and uh, what all major events have you won or placed in since you've been competition hunting, Evan? Uh, in May 2020, in May 2020, at an RQE at Enid Lake Coon Hunters Association, I won first place with 550 plus with trap. And so that June, we took trap to Missouri to the youth state hunt, and I've tied for first place with the junior division winner and i ended up flipping a coin and went home with second place prizes and then at the state hunt the mississippi state hunt my dog trap placed first in the registered division and second place overall and that qualified him for a night champion as a one-year-old and then i entered trap in the ukc black and tan days in peru indiana I won the Youth Endowment Hunt, which paid a $1,000 scholarship. I entered him in the bench show and won the Youth Showmanship Award and another $1,000 scholarship award. I was the Horizon Award recipient with the American Black and Tan Association also. When it started getting hot, again, I couldn't hunt trap no more because he got tick fever or a lichius. And we chose to pull him out of competitive hunts because he was not himself no more. He couldn't last very long hunting them, and he just burned up. And so that's when my dad 
called his coon hunting buddy Eddie Muse to see if he knew a dog I could hunt in UKC Youth Nationals, and he had it, and he had one at his house that was hunting that he was hunting for Jay Tidwell and Michael Moody. The dog's name was is Moby Junior. Mr. Eddie concerned that I was too young for a dog that hunts like Junior, who is a dead loner, get deep style hunting dog. We tried him out. We haven't looked back. The first hunt I took him to, I won my cast with him. I had four cast wins by the time we went to Oklahoma for Youth Nationals a month later. At Youth Nationals, I made it to the final four and won another $2,000 scholarship. The fifth cast win qualified Junior for the Tournament of Champions in the spring of 2022. After telling Mr. Eddie about our success, he suggested we try our hand at PKC hunts. At that time, I was not a member nor ever been to a PKC hunt. My first PKC hunt, I took Moby Jr. to a hunt in Simsboro, Louisiana, a pro hunt, on August 6, 2021. I won my cast that night, and we decided to split the final four casts. After that, I was qualified for the PKC Youth World Championship. We made my decision to make a run this month and try one of the youth handlers ticket. We got in the final four two nights at Tennessee River Classic. Hopefully won enough to get that ticket because that would give me a good opportunity to hunt for another scholarship. Oh, okay. That's awesome, man. So yes, sir. What does it mean to you to be able to win those scholarships to use later in life to be able to further your education? I'm grateful that I've won these scholarships, and I hope there are many more in the future. I'm hoping this will help me avoid student loan debt and give more options on where I attend college. I'm not sure where I will attend, but I'm interested in agriculture. Well, you got Delta State right up there by you. That's a pretty good one for agriculture. Yes, sir, it is. So tell me about being the youth director of your club and what all does that entail and what do you do my responsibilities include setting up for the hunts working the kitchen cleaning up the clubhouse and introducing myself to new hunters that show up and asking if they need any help any questions about the terrain or where might they might be hunting i want to make it a positive experience so they will want to come back particularly for youth hunters just to try to get their Try to get a spark out of at our club. And that's great. And I think that's awesome. So what about when uh, new adults come up? Do you also go up and kind of act as a liaison? I introduce yeah. myself and, you know, welcome them to our club. And if they also have any questions about the terrain or where might they go, I'll fill them in on the information. I think that's awesome, man. I, and I think... A lot of clubs should be able to dedicate someone to do that. That way you have that person. You know, I, I really do think that's great. So how have you personally encouraged other youths to get into the sport of cane hunting? I have, take, I have taken several other youth hunters pleasure hunting with, other, with my family or friends. Just whoever wants to go cane hunting. When we got a time that can match up, we going. We have had a fun time with entire families going on occasions. We have had some memorable adventures. They like to use the lasers on the coon lights and LED light collars in the dark. They are surprised to see how tech coon hunting can be. We've ran into wild hogs in Texas and a buzzard roost in the Mississippi Delta. It's been a fun adventure taking other people coon hunting. I think it's great that you're getting out there and you're getting people involved in the sport. I mean, especially being as young as you are, you might not understand, and you might. I'm not going to sit here and say you don't, but you and you might understand how much that means to the sport, right? Yes, sir. What tips would you give to other kids your age that are trying to get their friends involved in the sport? Well, I suggest taking them in cooler temperatures. It is more fun experience when there are less mosquitoes, humidity, snakes, and poison ivy. I would advise taking them with a good seasoned dog that will actually tree coons as opposed to a pack of puppies running off game all night. We try to take them to places where there is easy hunting, not a lot of hard walking to introduce them to the sport. We are enthusiastic about coon hunting, but also are realistic with them as far as there may be walking involved. They need to wear their appropriate clothing, etc. Taking them on good clear nights 
you don't want it raining and yucky for their first experience. If they show interest, invite them to a local hunt and let them go as a spectator on the cast so they can see what it's all about. That's awesome, man. That's great. That's some great information. So not only are you a successful coon hunter now, but you also placed first in the Mississippi State Science Fair, right? Yes, sir, I did. Yeah, and just for a little background, I actually placed second in the medicine and health division of the state science fair when I was in high school. So I kind of know a little bit about the the way the science fair goes. So I'm a judge. I'm walking up to your project. Tell me about your science fair project as if I'm a judge. Well, what I did was I hunted 14 nights with my dog trap. And I took the measurements of the wind each night. And I documented it down and I hunt for the same time every night. And I'd count how many coons he would tree. And I put all that information on the graph and got it all averaged out. And I came to the conclusion that when the wind is less than five miles an hour, you will tree more coons than you will on a night with it blowing more than five miles an hour. Okay, so when the wind's less than five miles an hour, you'll tree more coon? Yes, sir. Okay. What was your hypothesis going into that? I figured that it would probably be around, probably around a little bit more than five, you know, tree and more coons. I was actually kind of shocked that you would tree more with it less than five. Yeah, I mean, I mean, five doesn't seem like much, right? Yes, sir. So what gave you the idea to do that as a project? Well, my dad has always threw that idea out, and I just said, heck, why not? Let's try it. And my mom suggested that would also be really good and easy for me to do since I'm already coon hunting. I mean, it wouldn't be that hard just to document the wind speed. Yeah, I mean, that that is pretty cool. So the reason I come in second, or I shouldn't say the reason I come in second, the reason that I even made it to the state out of, you know, the school science fair was because my mom pretty much did my whole project. I hope my biology teacher, Miss Penny, didn't listen to this right now. Mm-hmm. She'd have a heart attack. But yeah, she pretty much did the whole thing. So did you do the project pretty much all on your own? Like yes. I didn't even do anything on mine except just talk to the judges. That's it. Yes, sir. I did all of it on my own. I just went with me and Trap, and we just went hunting around our house on the four wheeler. And the only thing my mom helped me do was set up, you know, get everything in order and, you know, get everything set up on the project. And that was it. That's awesome, man. That is great. I'll tell you. So my junior, that was my junior year. My mom did that for me. My senior year, she said, I ain't doing it this year. So, well, you know, all you got to do is make a board to be able to get the hundred or whatever. I didn't even place in the school science fair. So that just kind of goes to show you where I was at. So you did an awesome job, man. That really is. So yeah. what, what were you going to say? I said originally a vet friend of ours wanted to know how the weather affected turkeys gobbling. But the science fair was due in February, so I really couldn't do that. And that's what sparked the idea about the coon hunting one. You're already looking for new ideas, right, for this year's science fair? Yes, sir. And I'm going to do something with coon hunting. So do you have any ideas as to where you're going to go with that? I'm kind of interested in maybe the light, like red light, amber light. See which ones coons look at more, what their tendency is. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, that's a good one because that's a big deal, right? Yes, sir, that is, especially when you're in a big hunt. Need it. And to have some real data behind that, you know, I'm sure the light companies would appreciate it, right? (laughs) Yes, sir, I imagine they would. So was the science fair win better than a big cast win and why? Well, I enjoyed winning both, but I feel like the project exposed more nine hunters to the sport than a big win. You know, if you just see a big win on Facebook on coon hunting, other people that don't coon hunt really don't know what it took to win that hunt. Regular people that don't coon hunt, they know about the science fair. So I'm going to say the project, with that coon hunting project, it probably told more people about it and introduced them and showed them, you know, about coon hunting. And they could see how that could be really valuable to a coon hunter. I'm all about the introduction of positive creativity and innovation in the sport, man. So 
how does it make you feel that as a coon hunting project was seen by so many people in such a positive manner? I think it enlightened youth people who had no idea about the sport. Kids have literally asked me if we trophy hunt raccoons, stuff them and hang them on the wall. Or they think it is like the famous book where the red fern grows. Most people had absolutely no idea there were college scholarships available. My parents and I have been asked by several adults things like, I didn't realize people still coon hunted, and I didn't realize how many girls were involved in coon hunting. I did not know you could earn all these prizes. They asked about what type of dog we hunt, how often we hunt, how we take care of our dogs, do we kill raccoons. I guess people have just got away from coon hunting as the generations steadily go. They're just steadily fading away from coon hunting. I think I said it in our earlier podcast, but before me and my wife got together, she did not know that people still coon hunt. She's from central Mississippi. I mean, in an area that's, you know, around Morton, Raleigh. I mean, there's, that's a big coon hunting area. And that she is. did not, yeah, she did not know that coon hunting existed still. You know, I mean, it's crazy. It really is. It's, it's kind of in the shadows, I guess. And you're bringing it out into the light, right? And that's what's great. Yes, sir. So what are some of the other ways that you've come up with to introduce coon hunting to the masses? Uh, since we live so close to Batesville, Mississippi, where the UKC Winter Classic is held, a lot of people get to see the interest in our sport. I'm sure they are surprised and grateful for the stimulus to the local economy. When they ask why are they seeing all these trucks with dog boxes in the back, that gives us a chance to tell them about our sport. My parents use social media to share my success in coon hunting to enlighten our friends on the opportunities that coon hunting has provided. And against my wishes, they sometimes share photos of just me and my dogs having fun together around the farm. Yeah, and I saw the video now, and I'm going to have to put that on the Coon Hunting Universe Facebook page, okay? Yeah, okay. <laughs> That's pretty good, though. It was, that it was good. That, that was, it was funny. I'm not going to lie. That was, that was good. That's the way to get a dog worked up, huh? That is, yes, out. sir. That, that's, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. So what are some of the ways your parents have positively encouraged and supported you in your coon hunting career? My parents have been real big supporters of me and my coon hunting. My dad pleasure hunts with me a few nights a week and trains me and the dog. He carries me to hunts as well. He's been teaching me the fine line on being respectful to adults on competition hunts while standing by my guns. When it comes to voting on a cast, he always tells me to vote how I saw it and always be honest. We look at upcoming hunts and strategize which hunts to compete in so that we balance time and money. Our entire family goes to bigger hunts. They, that's like mini vacation. My mom tra makes our travel plans for the big competition and helps, uh, helps me balance hunting with school work. She is the one that encouraged me to do my science fair on coon hunting. They both serve as youth advisors for the Mississippi State Raccoon Hunting Association and volunteers at our local club. Man, that is great. See, I'll just make it kind of a family ordeal, huh? We do, yes, sir. So did your did your mom know anything about coon hunting before her and your dad got married? Well, my mom's dad and all of his family used to coon hunt a long, long time ago. But she's originally from Texas, and when she moved back to Mississippi, she's got some cousins that still coon hunt in Oxford, but she hadn't ever been with them or nothing, you know. She just moved back from Texas and was just living and working in Senatobia, Mississippi, and she met my dad, which was coon hunting then, competition coon hunting. Yeah, I just didn't know because, you know, she's so involved in it now. Yes, you know, sir. I don't know if she grew up in it too or whatever, you know. I think that's awesome. You know, you're talking about your dad grew up coon hunting. Yes, sir, he um, did. That I just think that's great. It really is. Th does your dad still competition hunt any? He hunts a little bit. Most of the time he just goes to spectators with me. He he hunts very, very rarely. He pleasure hunts now all the time, but he don't competition hunt no more, not much. Now what about your little brother? You got a little brother that hunts with you too, right? He does, yes, sir. He pleasure hunts with us. He's handled my dog Trap and the Youth Nationals. They didn't do no good together. Uh, how old is he? My brother is 12. 
Okay, so he he be coming on up here pretty soon, huh? He will, yes, sir. Get, getting ready to hit some bigger hunts. So, do you have anyone you'd like to give a shout out to, or anything else you'd like to add prior to us logging y'all? Yes, sir, I would. I'd like to thank several other coon hunters, as previously mentioned, Mr. Mike Crockett and Mr. Eddie Muse. I would also like to thank Mr. Jay Tidwell and Mr. Michael Moody for the opportunity to hunt Moby Jr. I want to thank Philip Heron for all his work as the Youth Director of American Black and Tan Coon Hunters Association. I want to thank Mr. and Mrs. Susan Lee and Gary Hayes of our local club for all their support. There have been several other coon hunters I have met along the way who have shared advice and support, and I appreciate it. I would like to personally give a shout out to your parents, man, because, you know, you, you wouldn't be in the positions that you're in without them. And I think that that is awesome. The way nice. that they support you and, you know, y'all make a family vacation out of it, man. You couldn't ask for anything better than that. I mean, really, yes, I'm serious. I mean, I give a shout out to them and that is great. It really is. Yes, sir. I'm very thankful. They let me coon hunt as much as they do. Not just let you coon hunt, you know, support you. and Yes, sir. You know, yeah, you know, I mean, it's not cheap to be able to go to all those big hunts and everything. It it's really not. It's not, no, sir. Well, Evan, it was good to have you on here. And I really, man, I thank you so much for being on here. I really do. And it, it has been great talking to you. And you going hunting tonight? Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Well, buddy, I'm going to let you get off here and I'm going to let you go on go hunting. You getting ready for any big events? Uh, I'm going to take Junior to the youth PKC world hunt. And then I'm going to hunt them the next week in the world hunt in Salem, Illinois. Okay. That's awesome, man. Well, I wish you the best of luck, buddy. Thank you. And it was good talking to you. Yes, sir. Bye-bye. All right, buddy. Bye. That was a great interview. So if you like what you heard here, find us on Facebook at Coon Hunting You. And also, go to Apple Podcasts and give us a rating and review. It really helps us out. And until next time, y'all have a wonderful day.